using the Dungeons and Dragons setting of Forgotten Realms, Sword Coast Legends has been seen by many of its already established fanbase to be the next step in getting our tabletop campaigns off the paper maps and onto our screens in its fully realised glory. Boasting its DM mode, which mirrors the concept of traditional Dungeons and Dragons, in which one player takes it upon themselves to be the storyteller and dungeon designer, Sword Coast DM mode aims to give us something that has always been dreamt of, but never fully realised. And it's with a heavy heart that I believe it still hasn't been realised. Not all the people I hire have spotless criminal records. Upon trying the DM mode for the first time, I thought it a good test to recreate one of my own adventures from Dungeons and Dragons, making adaptations to fit it into the game so that strangers would be able to play it. When making a campaign within Sword Coast, the DM has one very interesting decision to make, whether the game is to be played with or without an active DM. Taking advantage of the fact that Sword Coast is in fact a video game, Endspace gives the player the tools so that in theory, players will be able to play custom made campaigns on their own, just as easily as playing the single player story mode. Of course, Endspace also created Sword Coast Legends so that you and your friends could play your normal D&D sessions, but now within the Sword Coast game. While some may think this is a far-fetched assumption, that's certainly the impression that the game seems to give though. Sword Coast's website flaunts itself with the words your story, your adventure, your legend, promising the openness that traditional D&D has been offering for decades. But of course, it's impossible for a game to be as infinite and flexible as the tabletop format, and indeed it probably was naive for people to think that the game could possibly deliver on this, myself included. Actually using the DM mode almost feels like it was unfinished. The lack of basic tools and functions was immediately apparent, such as not being able to rotate furniture and props. There's no search function, meaning that to place anything into the world you must delve into five different monster and prop lists before you actually find the category that books are labelled under. And most importantly and glaringly annoying is the lack of an undo or redo function. I am fully ready to concede that perhaps there are ways to do things I just mentioned and I simply missed them. But then I asked just where in the hell was the tutorial that was teaching and showing me how to use these tools? Experimentation is without a doubt the best way to explore what can be done in DM mode. But by that same token, if there is any way for me to undo actions or rename an NPC without having to create a character every time, you need to tell me. On the player side, things are actually deceptively simple, and even until now I'm unsure as to whether I prefer this or would actually like a little bit more depth to my combat. On the one hand it keeps combat flowing and fast paced, and the active pause function isn't used to death as opposed to the very similar Pillars of Eternity which came out a little earlier this year. On the other hand, the amount of tactics and abilities needed can be pretty minimal and lack excitement once you've gotten your iron. For example, for my paladin's abilities, the only things I really needed was shield wall and lay on hands. Upon realising this and upgrading them whenever I could, every other ability felt relatively inconsequential. The same being true of my wizard and cleric. The wizard doing enough damage once magic missiles was fully ranked, and my cleric not needing much thought past having access to three different healing skills. What ultimately bugged me about Sword Coast Legends was its inability to wow me. While I could blame the fact that Pillars of Eternity managed to squeeze its release before Sword Coast, it doesn't change the fact that ultimately, Sword Coast doesn't really bring anything new to the table. Pillars had an attention to detail that Legends just seemed to lack. Camping in dungeons, moving in formation, all ironically made it feel more like D&D than Sword Coast Legends, which, while dungeon crawling is without a doubt the best thing in the game, it doesn't stand out enough when compared to games like Pillars of Eternity or Legends of Grimrock. This isn't to say that Sword Coast is a bad game, for game's dialogue, main cast of characters and storyline are actually all very good and actually very interesting. The story isn't convoluted like Pillars of Eternity, the range of accents and voices for the main cast are actually brilliant, particularly in Bellamy, the angry Scottish halfling with a great sword. Hello there! Good to see you out and about! 
Seems there's been a shocking development or two. And the game's side quests are actually some of the best I've seen in a very, very long time. Each of them being very small in terms of the steps required, and most importantly, the rewards are all actually significant, meaning that side quests, if you didn't enjoy the interactions, are still absolutely worth your time, as every time I finished a longer than average side quest, I was guaranteed to get at least one new piece of gear. Endspace also clearly embraced the cartoonish and ludicrous nature that traditional D&D games have known to become. Through my game, I had met a talking fish mounted on a wall, an elf who was convinced his friend was Snow White, and most recently obtained a rolling pin that actually did more damage than my previous weapon. I think I can summarize Sword Coast story mode by saying it's a great casual RPG that often made me giggle, as well as featuring puzzles that are actually very much above average. Sword Coast all in all was a bit of an odd experience really. As a D&D game it was very simple and far less complicated and in-depth as to be expected with the tabletop genre, therefore meaning I would suggest it to more casual players or those seeking a gateway into the universe of D&D. However, the lack of background information and codecs within the game means that those who are unfamiliar with certain monsters or settings within D&D may not ever get the information that they seek from Sword Coasts, meaning that I would say it's mainly marketed to established players. This tightrope walk of trying to be casual and still appeal to the hardcore fans means that Sword Coasts missed out on really excelling in either field and I struggle to understand which group of players would most enjoy it. All of this combined with the fact that DM mode fell pretty short of what was expected, and the fact that that was the only thing that set it out from the rest, means it gets a 6 out of 8 bits from me. While I originally almost gave this a 5 out of 8, at the end of the day I did have fun playing the game and actually enjoyed the storyline whilst reviewing it. So it's hardly fair of me to berate something that I ultimately enjoyed. I've been Yaki from The Killer Bits and for more reviews, first impressions and vlogs be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. And of course you could also follow us for more gaming good stuff on Facebook, on facebook.com forward slash The Killer Bits or on Twitter at The Killer Bits. And if you really can't get enough, you could always support us on Patreon to get access to behind the scenes footage and our YouTube series a whole week in advance. Thank you again for watching. Don't be a stranger.